Hi, I'm Pat and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about something that I've had issues with for the past year and that's getting in and out of my driveway. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more BMW i8 content. But for today, I'm going to be modifying the end of my driveway to make it easier to get in and get out. Let's take a look at how difficult it is for the i8 and Rebecca's VW to get in and out of the driveway. As you can tell, there's a lot of wheel spin on the i8 where the curb meets the road. So I need something to fill that gap. And it's also difficult for Rebecca to get in and out with the VW from time to time. Either we have some suspension that's lifting off the ground or in the worst case of the i8, sometimes it'll get some scraping at the very center of the vehicle. Now, this is a problem that I want to fix, and really the only way to take care of that is to modify the end of the driveway. So, I could either go to the county and get a permit and have the complete apron of my driveway replaced with a less steep apron, or I can install this device by Pile, which is a driveway curb, and it's made of rubber. Let's take a closer look. So, this driveway curb made by Pile, and there's a link in the description below, is made out of rubber. And it actually has a little bit of a curve to it, so the bottom can rock and the top can rock here if we just place it on a flat surface, but it's really intended to be placed where the curb meets the road. Let's take a closer look. So what I'm trying to do is fill this gap in here because when the tire hits here, the car can hit here. And I generally don't have that steep of a driveway or that steep of a curb, but it's still annoying enough to the point where I wanna go ahead and install this. So I purchased four of these and each one of these is a four foot section and each section comes with four holes where you can install hardware. And the reason I have them set up like this right now is so I can install the hardware. The holes on this are about a half an inch in diameter. Now a 7 16th bolt would make the most sense but of course I didn't have access to that. So I have a 3 8 inch bolt here, it's about four inches long. And this material obviously when we insert the bolt will be able to pass completely through both sections. And here you can see there's an extension on the end, there's quite a lot of room. And I also have some washers, so I'm going to place one washer on one end, one on the other, and then install this nut on the very end. It doesn't have to be super tight, but just strong enough to be able to hold it all together. So I picked up 12 of these bolts, again they're 4 inches long by 3 eighths, in diameter in order to fit in these holes and that way I can link four of these four foot sections together. Now obviously this is not as wide as my driveway. If I wanted to make it exactly the same width as my driveway I have purchased two more for the ends but I have more difficulty in the middle of the driveway especially where that part of the car traverses over the curb. So what we're going to do in order to install this, I've already lined these up and they're ready to go. We're going to install these bolts and then we're going to take the entire unit and flip it over so that it lays into the part of the driveway that I want to fill, this part of the curb. Now I also want you to check out Heidi and Franny's channel because they recently installed the same unit at their house. And it's not a pile unit but is made by Bridget and it does exactly the same thing except it's a little bit more expensive and the quality is a little bit better. I figured I'd start with the cheap one. Eh, we'll see how these piles do and there'll be information in the description below as to how I feel with this product over time. Now that all the bolts are tightened, it's ready to be pushed into position. We're going to go ahead and roll it over so that it fills the gap here in the curb. And then after that, we can move it around in order to make sure that it's aligned correctly. And I think that's it. We'll be uh, ready to use it. We'll go up first, all the way up. Yeah, because like 200 pounds now. All right.
I went ahead and repositioned this to make sure that it was midway between where the, where the road was and the curb. And there's also a gap underneath the middle to allow water to pass through. Let's take a closer look at that. We wanted to make sure that was lined up at the very bottom end of the curb. So here's that gap I'm talking about all the way down at the bottom. And that is where the water passes through. So I may have to move this just a little bit more that way. But once this is all set up and done, that little gap that's down there should be down here at the very bottom of this curb section. And then we're good to go to test it out. Okay, everything is lined up perfectly now. We got the uh, gap there for the water to run down. Now, please keep in mind, check your county code before installing these. Obviously, some counties don't want you putting anything here that you can uh, not remove. So this is removable, and when the snowplow comes down through here, I'll be able to pull this up and get it out of the way, at least you know, over the winter time during those periods where there's lots of snow. I probably won't be driving the I-8 anyway. But uh, you can also see that there are some holes here so that if you are in a private area or you do have the ability, the code allows you to drill some holes, you can go ahead and install some lag bolts. And this will prevent this section from going anywhere. So I think it looks pretty good. Now it's time to test it out. All right, I'm inside the I-8 and as I'm backing up, it looks like I'm only going to have one rear wheel on the pile unit and on the other wheel I'm not going to be on it. So let's just see what happens when I normally back out. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull back in. And I'm going to aim for my normal parking spot. Wow, that's a lot smoother. Let me back out one more time. So I'm going to back out a little bit differently. Usually I try to hug the curb. I'm going to back out so that I can stick out a little further and see what happens. Yeah. So I can almost pull straight in my driveway at this point. Look at that. I couldn't do that before. I think these are great. I think that's pretty cool. What do you think? If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell for notifications as I'll be posting more BMW i8 content. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.